Andy Sullivan at Blue Collar Corner. I'm here at the Young Republicans Club, and I'm with Joel Pollack. Joel Pollack has a very interesting do- job. He works with Mr. Andrew Beitbart from Big Government. And uh, Joel and I were talking about the Ground Zero Mosque, and the subject of Cordoba came up. And this is something that he's very familiar with. Joel, tell me a little about Cordoba. Well, I've been to Cordoba, Spain. I have a particular interest in it. It's a very interesting city, a city with the history of Christians, Jews, and Muslims living in the same place. And it's important to recognize that it was a city where Jews and Christians were more tolerated than elsewhere in the Islamic world at the time. But we shouldn't overstate the degree to which there was a golden age. It wasn't an open society the way we would recognize today in the United States. It wasn't a society of equality. If you were a Christian or Jewish, you were still a second-class citizen. And for many people uh, in the extremist Islamic uh, school of theology and politicized uh, religion, the Cordoba Initiative, so-called, uh, is not just to create that kind of tolerance, but actually to reclaim Cordoba, according to the idea that if a piece of territory was ruled by the Islamic Caliphate, it always belongs uh, in the Islamic uh, ambit, basically. And so, uh, for radical Islam, the struggle with the West is not about American bases in Saudi Arabia, and it's not about American troops in Iraq, or about a Jewish state in Israel. It's about Spain. It's about reclaiming as far as Western Europe and pushing beyond there. And uh, really, the, the most tolerant society that has ever existed is the United States, where we have freedom of religion. Without a doubt. Freedom of religion. And as long as people are willing to accept that and to appreciate that about others, you know, we have never, in this country, closed our doors to anybody from any faith as long as people swear an oath to the Constitution and uh, swear to abide by it. And that, those are the ground rules. And until now, people have had a... Uh, you know, there's been always societal tensions, you know, and that's just life, that's how human beings are, but we've, we've done extremely well as a society. Absolutely. Now, what do you think about Cordoba's uh, attempt to change their name to Park 51? Did you think that was maybe a, a PR expediency type deal? I think so, and, you know, Park 51, I guess, sounds kind of upscale, you know, uh, so maybe they're looking for investors and for fundraising, and my understanding was they didn't get the money together even to proceed with the project. Um, but, you know, I think that... Well, Joe, we spoke about the fact that even though all of the political, powerful people in New York City all lined up to support this project, because of the people, they could not get it going. Well, I think you'll find there's a tendency among politicians to look for communal leaders that they think can present uh, a facade of tolerance to the city. Politicians aren't yet aware of the basic fact that ordinary people know every day, which is that you just have to engage with people, treat them as ordinary people, stand up for American ideas. Uh, new people coming to this country will, will integrate, will accept that. People come here because they want to be here. People respect American values. And politicians have this idea you've got to cultivate relationships with leaders, self-described communal leaders, and so on. And uh, They forget the people sometimes. The people, and actually, you find that ordinary people, Muslims or otherwise, don't need this kind of appeasement on the political level. It doesn't provide anything for anybody. It's nothing anyone can relate to. And if you just actually stand up for America and American values, you'll find that most people, most reasonable people, will be just fine with that. That's why people are here. They want to be part of the United States. They understand what freedom means, and that's why people are here. You know, I found that, especially when I was in D.C., I was shocked by all the support I was actually getting from other Muslims who thought that Iman Raouf was doing something that was completely out of line and disrespectful to all of the people that died that day. Yeah, and you'll find in any community there's diverse views, but particularly in the Muslim community, I think there's a problem where you have extremist voices often being the loudest voices, and they do frighten other people away from expressing different opinions. And we've had a few people who've spoken out and who've dared to be different, and that's very good. And I wouldn't be surprised if more people came up and supported your work because people understand what America's about, and people understand that what happened at Ground Zero was a tragedy for the world, but first and foremost, it was a tragedy for the United States. And that's a place that is always going to be a place of American grief. And it's not appropriate, I don't think, to transform it into some kind of universal symbol when its fundamental symbolism is really about attacking America and about American survival and American strength. And I think that no matter what background you're from, whether Muslim, Christian, Jewish, whatever, I think people recognize that and respect it. And we should respect it ourselves, and other people will respect it too. Joel, you, you completely articulated that perfectly. Um, 
Now, just to jump to another topic, we're here with Andrew Breitbart, and we're going to do a book signing. Tell us a little about the, uh, the evening for tonight. Well, this is a great opportunity. We're very grateful to the Young Republicans of New York for throwing this together. Andrew's kicking off his book tour tomorrow, and he's going to start it out with Sean Hannity. And he had a day in New York, and we figured, you know, let's try to get it. That guy's a conservative, isn't he? <laughs> I think so. And uh, we said, let's, let's put something together in New York. And so we reached out uh, to Katie Manzi and then to James Meany, and they were able to put this together. We're very grateful to the Young Republicans. It's great. The turnout's fantastic. It's a great little place at the Overlook here in Midtown, and we're just happy to be here. And Andrew's having fun, and everyone seems to be having a good time. And we're grateful to have you guys. Joel, thank you so much. Thank you. Blue Collar Corner signing out.